It's an honor to be here, and I'd like to start off by thanking the Staglin family and Imro um, for this award, which is going to allow my laboratory to examine mechanisms of novel fast onset antidepressant treatments. So depression is a very common and a very heterogeneous disorder. So depression can present itself very differently in different um, people. So you need to present with only five of this list of symptoms continuously for two weeks to receive a diagnosis of major depression or major depressive episode. Therefore, two different people with the same diagnosis can present very differently and have only a minor overlap in symptoms. Depression is actually the leading cause of disability worldwide. Did you guys know that? It, it's remarkable. Um, 35 million people are affected worldwide with depression. And that means that 15 to 20 percent of, of, of people, of everyone, will have a major depressive episode at some point during their lifetime. This graph shows us that younger people are affected about twice as often as older people. We're not sure why that is. In addition, women are affected about twice as often as men are. Um, and a whole host of family and genetic studies have provided pretty conclusive evidence that depression is caused by both genetic and environmental factors. But uh, we're still a ways away from identifying the exact genes for depression. Um, it's gonna, we're going to have to add a lot more samples to our GWAS studies um, to accomplish that. But it is definitely theor theoretically possible and within our grasp to do so within the next several years. Untreated depression is actually the leading cause of suicide. Now, there are a number of causes of suicide, and mostly it's other neuropsychiatric disorders. But depression is the most common cause. And there's an incredibly high number of suicides per year worldwide. There's actually more than 800,000 completed suicides per year. So this is a staggering number. And to put that into perspective, more people actually die per year from suicide than from homicide. So you are more likely to kill yourself, essentially, than to be killed by someone else. Um, I found this uh, to be a very startling statistic. And the risk for suicide is increased by 20-fold during a major depressive episode. So depression does not discriminate. It can affect anyone. And it has affected even some of our most visionary leaders. So Abraham Lincoln actually suffered from depression for most of his lifetime. And it's well documented that he actually experienced at least two episodes of major depression, one when he was 26 years old and one when he was 31. And towards the end of his second episode, he wrote, I believe, in one of his letters, I'm now the most miserable man living. And um, Abraham Lincoln told a number of his friends also that he was suicidal. So Abraham Lincoln must have had susceptibility genes for depression. And he was also subjected to a large number of stressors during his lifetime. Now, current antidepressants, and by that I mean antidepressants that are um, currently used clinically today, these include the SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, tricyclics, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, and there are also some atypicals that are used. These all provide pharmacological treatment for depression and also for anxiety disorders. However, all of the treatments that are currently in use require two to four weeks, at least, of continuous treatment for the onset of therapeutic effects. So this de therapeutic delay is an enormous burden um, on illness. So essentially, if you're very lucky and you res you're a responder to the first drug you try, you'll have to wait, wait two to four weeks to have your depression begin to remit. If you don't respond to the first drug, now you have to try the second drug, and you have to wait another um, several week period and so on. So um, there is a great, uh, there's a great need for the development of fast onset antidepressants. And currently, there are no approved fast onset antidepressant drugs. 
Um, some have been identified, but they cannot be used clinically. So this represents a major unmet, un, <clears throat> unmet need in psychiatry. So my lab recently identified serotonin 2C receptor antagonists as putative fast onset antidepressants using mice. So this is all preclinical work in animals. And these drugs are drugs that block or antagonize the serotonin 2C receptor. Um, now that I've received the IMRO Rising Star Award, my lab um, will be able to focus on identifying the neural mechanisms that actually mediate this effect that we've discovered. Um, and this should hopefully then lead to novel, fast-acting um, treatments for depression. So my Rising Star Award is going to address three critical questions regarding the mechanism of action of serotonin 2C antagonists. How are they working? How are they producing these fast onset antidepressant effects? Well, first, we think that, um, this pointer doesn't show up very well. We think that enhanced release of dopamine from these dopaminergic neurons that project from the BTA to the hippocampus, or those that project from the BTA to the medial prefrontal cortex, we believe that one of these pathways must be essential for their effects. So first, we're going to determine whether increased firing of dopaminergic VTA to hippocampal or VTA to medial prefrontal cortex projections um, actually are responsible for inducing fast onset antidepressant effects. And we're going to be using some very fancy kind of state-of-the-art techniques, um, and we're going to be able to actually independently activate separately first one pathway and then the other, increase the number of um, spikes that these neurons are firing in a way and behaving animals to be able to determine uh, which one is mediating the antidepressant onset. Then second, we will identify which dopamine receptor subtypes mediate the effects of serotonin 2C antagonists. And uh, the function of serotonin receptors turns out to be a lot more complicated than we once thought. Um, so now we know that uh, the many different subtypes of dopamine receptors can actually interact with each other as heterodimers, which then have unique signaling properties. So it's not just D, you know, D1, D2, D3 receptors. It's in addition all of those you know, interacting with each other in combination. So we uh, propose to examine the role of all of these different dopamine receptor types and their dimers um, in the mechanism of action of serotonin 2C antagonists. And we will look um, either in the medial prefrontal cortex or the hippocampus or both, depending on what we find in the previous work. And then finally, number three, we will determine which neural circuits activated by serotonin 2C antagonist treatment actually mediates antidepressant onset. So again, this is going to involve some very sort of fancy um, novel techniques, but we will actually be able to functionally mark the neural networks that get activated at antidepressant onset. So we give our serotonin 2C antagonists we mark the neurons at antidepressant onset, and then we will be able to actually reactivate those specific networks, but instead of in the whole brain, only in the brain region which we choose. So either in the medial prefrontal cortex or in the hippocampus. And um, in this fashion, we will determine which neuronal ensembles actually mediate antidepressant onset. And so our ultimate goal then is using this award um, the, the IMRO Rising Star Award in memory of George, George Largue um, to identify novel information regarding fast onset antidepressant effects in mice. And ultimately, this should lead to um, searches or being able to identify compounds for human testing. And then ultimately, um, the goal is to develop novel fast acting treatments for depression. And that brings me to my acknowledgments. Okay. okay.